I'm Tomio Duran from Forbes, and we're here with Rod Brooks from uh, Rethink Robotics. And you just released a new product uh, just recently, um, which is really uh, a big innovation in, in the industry. Can you talk about what Yeah, is? Yeah, the, the product's name is Baxter, and it's a humanoid robot, but it's an industrial robot. It's meant to go into factories, small, medium enterprises, places that don't have robots now because traditional industrial robots have been so hard to integrate, such a high barrier to entry. So small manufacturers with less than 500 employees don't have them. This, this robot's meant to take it out of the box and within an hour a high school educated line worker has programmed it or trained it to do a task and it's doing a task. You have this whole platform that you're building for the robots that, that can be expanded for a lot of different uses. We're also putting out an SDK, a software developers kit, so that other people can take the robot and program it to, do, to work in completely different domains. And you know, just like with the PC, when people got their hands on the PC, they started doing things that the original designers of the PC hadn't been thinking about. We're sort of hopeful that by having a vast number of people out there with a very low cost platform, they'll, they'll have all sorts of creative ideas and we'll start to see robots get into areas besides manufacturing and floor cleaning. We will need technology to help with elder care and it can't just be information technology, it's got to be physical technology. I'm hopeful that people will start to use this platform to explore some of those ideas. How smart are the robots, quote unquote, in, in terms of um, they can do a variety of tasks, you can program to do different things? It's aware of, uh, aware of objects in the world, it understands cardboard boxes for instance, that's where stuff goes. So it's real little common sense stuff built into it that, that right. any person would know. Okay. But it's not intellectually very bright. Right. You're saying as you do more releases it'll get smarter and, and it'll be able to get do more applications. So in the early releases it's really materials handling, picking stuff off of conveyors, putting it into boxes, taking it out of boxes, putting it onto conveyors or other things. Early in 2013 it'll be able to put uh, piece, partially assembled things into test machines and press a button and wait for the pass fail light to come on and decide what to do next. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and pressing a button by the way is, is not something you just do with position, you use force, you sense the force as you press. So there's some, there's some neat programming there to make that work. How far are we away from robots being part of everyday people's, in their house, in their everyday lives? If you went back 30 years and told people that they would have computers in their kitchens, they would have thought of this big box with two rotating discs, <laughs> the tape drives, and that's not how it turned out, but there's computers in everyone's <laughs> kitchen now. So we do have some robots in, the, in houses, we have Roombas, um, I think we, we will get more and more robotic capabilities in our lives. We're getting, you know, automobiles are turning into robots with all the safety systems mm -hmm. and the automatic driving and the lane following and the parking. Yeah. They're starting to be robots. So we're going to see it trickle in, trickle in, trickle into our life. So we'll be surrounded by robotic technology. What do you see in the future coming for, for this Well, I, th I think we need to make progress in a number of areas. Computer vision for our robots has improved a lot, but we're not as good as a two-year-old child two-year-old child can recognize this is a chair even though they've never seen a chair that looks exactly like this. We're not as good in language as a four-year-old child. A four-year-old child, you know, has grammar down. They maybe don't have the vocabulary, but they can handle noisy environments, they can handle accents, and we need more speech interaction with the robots. We don't have the dexterity of a six-year-old child. A six-year-old child can tie shoelaces. A six-year-old child can do anything you could ask you would want a robot to do manually. And, and, and lastly, um, our robots don't have the social understanding of an eight-year-old child. An eight-year-old child has a model of the other person and what they understand and then interacts with them appropriately. Right. Doesn't, it's not going through the same menu of items every time. <laughs> so the two, four, six, eight, they're the targets we need to go after right. of getting the capabilities of our robots up towards those and then they're going to be much more useful in all aspects of our lives.